Hi, this is Pastor Brad of Greater Faith, Grace Bible Church, and yes, I am so grateful and thankful that we were able to come to your home today and to share this video of Greater Faith, Grace Bible Church, Victory Celebration. But things are so confusing. Things are chaotic now, and things are really crazy these days. And we want to be able to, when you watch this video, to see a sense of uh, comfort, some calmness, and, and just that, that God is still in, in control because, you know, we go through so much day in and day out. We want to take this opportunity right now, this video, the service here, to worship our God, our Savior, to show you that God is good and God is still in control. And on our website, we have some tremendously free resources and tools that will help you grow and stir you and strengthen you in your growth and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This video is designed really to inspire you to encourage you, to strengthen you, and just be a blessing to you. So uh, also, if you like this video, please share this video. Give us a thumbs up, and also subscribe to our channel. Every time you get a video pops up, you will make sure you, you get the video. May this service today encourage you with some great singing, and then I'll come back with the, with the wonderful Word of God and some transforming truth that you would understand and see how glorious, how great our God is. So again, enjoy this sermon. We're so grateful and honored that you took time to watch the video. May God bless you richly. God bless you. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Good morning. Welcome. Hallelujah. Welcome, welcome to, to Greater, Greater Faith, Faith Grace Bible, Bible Church. Church. It is so good to see everybody in the house today. Amen. Yes. I am so glad we are able to fellowship in person, in addition to online. And I just want to take the time to welcome those who are watching online. Thank you so much for tuning in with us this morning. Um, if you are watching online, just a few things. If you are able to, uh, just, you know, take a pause. Take a pause moment and just engage with us during service. Um, and for those of you who are, you know, having to multitask because you don't have a choice, thank you still also for tuning in and trying to get fed and get into the word. Um, so just want to go over a few uh, things that we're doing here at Greater Faith Grace Bible Church. We are following CDC guidelines. So we are operating. I'm sorry, y'all got to swallow is going on. God, take it away. <laughs> okay. In the name of okay. Jesus, be gone. <laughs> Woo! All, All right. right. Yeah, right. amen. Okay. <laughs> um, so, yes, we are following CDC guidelines. So when you do sh show up here, we are doing temperature checks at the door. Uh, we also have face masks. So in case you forgot yours in the car or whatever, we have face masks for you as well. I wear a face mask. We're all wearing face masks in here. It's just y'all wouldn't be able to hear nothing I'm saying. Um, so I just want to make sure you guys can hear all this good information. And not only that, we are operating um, at a 25% capacity. So we are not packing out the house. So that way we are able to do proper social distancing. We have markers on our pews. So that way people know, um, you know, the proper amount of distance to sit. We also have hand sanitizer stations all over our church, and we are doing our due diligence in making sure we are cleaning and doing proper sanitation protocols because as much as we are thankful to have, you know, technology, we're in the 21st century, there is nothing like human connection. And so in order for us to continue to have this connection, we want to follow the guidelines of, of the state um, so that way we can still come together in person to worship and hear the word, all right? Um, so I just want everybody to take a moment and just, you know, do a friendly social distance way to your neighbor. Say, hey, neighbor. Hey, neighbor. All right. So not only are we, you know, trying to keep a friendly and safe environment for you guys to hear the word. We want to be able to provide benefits for why you would want to come in person to hear the word, why you would want to engage online for those of you who have ailments or who may not feel comfortable during this time to come, you know, because of COVID. So why come to church or why watch online? 
First of all, is to learn. It is so important to learn. And it's just like when we go to school, we go to school to learn about different subjects. So when it comes to Christianity or just, you know, your faith or the Bible, it's important to engage with those who are teaching the Bible, those who are teaching what the Christian faith is. Not only that, it's good to learn how to read the Bible, but when you connect by going to a service or whether you're um, you know, engaging online, you'll be able to learn how to apply the Bible in your lifestyle. And when I say lifestyle, I mean, how do you make life decisions? Being able to learn how to make life decisions from a biblical perspective. Not only that, knowing truth. How are we able to know the truth in the midst of our ever-changing culture and times? In addition to that, how to grow in character. Because let's be real, we all got failures, we all got some sins, we all have weaknesses, and the goal in Christianity is for us to look like Christ in our character, in how we think, and how we talk, and how we interact with people in different contexts of our lives, right? So when you connect to a church, whether it's online or whether it's in person, you are gonna learn how to apply the word in your lifestyle to see change, to see growth, to get understanding. Because yeah, the Bible is a phenomenal, phenomenal um, book of truth, but it's important to know why. It's important to get those answers, those, those doubts, those, those gnawing questions. Because no matter how long you've been a Christian, or whether you're considering Christianity, or whether you're a new Christian, we all have questions that it's like, God, I don't know about this. I need some more understanding, you know? So um, in addition to that, besides growing in the word, connection, I mentioned that earlier. God did not create us to live an isolated, individualistic life. Life, life is hard. hard. So, so it's, it's not, not only important, important for us to have support when life is hard, but, but it's, it's also awesome, awesome to know that you have people that actually, actually care about your successes, successes in life, be able, be able to, to celebrate, celebrate the highlights, highlights and the joys in your life, life but, but also be in the trenches with you when life is throwing some things that's like, God, I don't know about all this, okay? So how to connect more with Greater Faith, Grace Bible Church, so that way you can be able to receive those benefits that I was letting you know. So we are a, you know, tech, technologically advanced church, so we are online, and we are on social media platforms such as Facebook and Instagram, and you can follow us at GFGBC Rialto, so that way you can connect with us online, and in addition to a service on Sunday, you can continue to connect with a group of people um, from our church. Because let's be real, Sundays are great. It's a great foundation for your week, but life happens every single day. And sometimes it's easy to forget the word that you heard on Sunday, so it's good to stay connected throughout the week. So you can join us online in our private Facebook groups for the ladies, we have our GLOW ministry. So you can connect with our private Facebook group, GLOW, because we is glowing up, okay? And then for the men, we got something for y'all too. Men, let, come on, that's right, represent, represent. It's not just ladies that get together, y'all men be getting together, y'all be talking about sports, y'all be talking about man things and all that too. So we have a men's group on Facebook for you called Ma Mafia. Oh, that sounds like a boss, okay. So, so Morphia is spelled M-O-F-I-A. And for our youth, we definitely, definitely have, have something for you. So, so we have two groups. We have youth, and, and then we have one that is joy for children. For children. So, so parents, feel, feel free, free to connect, connect your kids to these groups because, because we definitely want, want you to get fed, but it's also important for you to implement and teach your children in the ways of the Lord, in the things that you are learning. Not, Not only that, that you can connect, connect with us on our website, website and that's, that's where you'll be able to find out all of our various um, 
you know, resources, uh, different, different ministries that we have, different, different Bible, Bible studies, studies and, and Bible, Bible studies. studies. Everybody, Everybody didn't heard, heard about Bible, Bible study at church, church right? right? So, so we, we have, have Wednesday night, night Bible studies at 7 p.m. We, we are doing that on Zoom. Zoom. And, and then not only that, that we have on Sunday nights at 6 p.m. our young adult Bible study. study. Um, so, so for, for the, the millennials, millennials out there, there join, join us as we dig into the word, as we're trying to navigate because, you know, our culture is different. So we got to figure out some things, but do it together, okay? All right, right. so So, without without further further ado, the the most most important important part part about about today's today's service is communion. communion. It It is is the first week of the month, month. and And we we are going to just take take time time later later on to to reflect reflect on what Jesus Jesus did for us on the cross, um, because it's easy for us to get caught up in, yeah, I know what Jesus did, and yada, yada, but it's important to pause, it's important to reflect, and it's important to just have that connection with God and remembering why you are even coming to church, why are you even implementing the Christian faith in your lifestyle, and that is honor that is due to God. So if you can, for those online, because we're not, you know, we're not going to not include y'all. Get, get some, some grape juice, juice cranberry, cranberry juice, juice, get you some crackers, get you some bread, get you whatever. And you can be able to join us in communion as well virtually. And for those of us that are here in person, we're going to do communion just a little bit different. So usually you know how we pass our cups when we're done. We're actually going to hold on to those. And so if you want, you can hold on to and throw it away yourselves, or you can leave it at your pew, and our cleaning crew will take care of that for you. So like we said, we are implementing CDC guidelines, and we are trying to protect our health. We are trying to operate in wisdom, and we are trying to live spiritually and physically in this world, okay? All right, so let's get into worship prayer and we're we're gonna gonna get get a little little scripture scripture in before before we get our our service fully started started. so So let's let's just take take this time to worship worship our lord Lord and savior jesus Jesus christ Christ. all right amen 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 and amen amen how many of you know we serve an awesome god yes sir he's still parting red seas he's still turning water into wine he's still causing the lame to walk and the blind to see so come and Join us as we serve and sing about our awesome God. Awesome God. Amen. 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 If you're able to, can you please stand up with us, please? This, this, we would just love that. We all here. Let's stand up if you can. Love that. Thank you.
as we uh, as we go into this next song, um, I know that this past year has been difficult for many, including myself. <laughs> if you think it hasn't been, you're lying to yourself. And we don't have to put that smile on our face, but we have such a good and such a great God. Such a good and such a great God. And as we're as you're listening to this song, really just reflect on what is it that I need God to turn around in my life? Because yeah, our God, God is, is faithful. faithful. He's powerful. Yes, yes. And he doesn't supply what we want, but he supplies our needs. Mm. He supplies our needs, and he's just working and cooking up there right now. And so we're going we're gonna to cry out to God right now. So I ask that you cry out along with us yes, as yes. we cry out and ask God to just turn it around, thank Jesus. You, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Yes, we serve a God who can turn it around, who can turn it around, amen. Breakthrough will come. We serve a God who can turn it around. All of you going through, God can turn it around. I know many of you out there who are watching here on person, you have saw and you experienced how God has turned things around. And I tell you, uh, as part of Greater Faith Grace Bible Church, on our prayer ministry on Tuesdays and, and our Fridays, we have prayed and we have seen God turn some situations around in people's lives, amen, through the power of prayer, praise God, amen. And again, I welcome all the Greater Faith Grace Bible Church family here today and to all those who are watching online, we greet you with a great big cyber hug and say we love you, we appreciate you, and we thank God today that God's going to bless you and encourage you and show you his great, awesome love in a very unique and powerful way. Amen. And I was behind every mask. I'm praying that there is a smile. Amen. There is a smile behind every mask today. Praise God. And we're going give to God, give God the glory and the praises today for who he is and great things he is doing. I, we thank God for the dynamic, awesome praise and worship band and the great job that they do in ministering and bringing forth songs of praise to lift our hearts each and every day and to our wonderful ushers and greeters and, and, our, and our ministry team, amen, our media team, amen, to our, to our welcome person, our sister, Brittany Abraham, God bless you. Great job. Oh, welcome into the service, amen. Just set the tone for we thank God for that. And uh, we're going to just delight ourselves in God today. We say blessing. We said earlier we're going to have a virtual communion today. Did I just drop my cup someplace? Did I just knock it over? Praise God. I'm making you. I know. Oh, there it is. There it is. Let me get some right here. God, amen. This is March the seventh, the first Sunday in March, and we celebrate Holy Communion. And for those who are watching online, I pray that you have opportunity to gather from 
bread or some drink that represent Christ's broken body and his shed blood. We don't want to take this communion lightly or flippantly or without a thorough examination of our hearts and lives. So often communion can become ritualistic and routine. But like I shared last week, we need to really have the right heart and the right mindset for having this here communion. It's more than just Richard, let's take some bread and some drink. It goes deeper than that. On first Sunday back in February, I shared with you in communion time that we take communion. He says to take it and drink it. We as believers, when we take it, we drink of it. But if you are not right with God, you don't drink it, you spill it. You spill it. But when you're right with God, you know you are redeemed, bought by the precious blood of Jesus Christ, you examine yourself, and then when you take the cup, you are drinking it. That's why the Bible says, man, examine it, so that we don't just spill the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. And then the, the, the Bible tells says to drink ye all of it. Drink ye all of it. And that means all that's in the cup, we drink all of it. So when you drink of the cup, think I'm drinking all of God's love. I'm drinking all of God's mercy. I am drinking all of God's goodness. I am drinking all of God's power. I am drinking all of God's grace, his goodness. I am drinking all of God's healing power, all of his restoration. I am drinking all of it, all of it, because there's power in the blood, name of Jesus Christ. So we drink all of it. And then in the Bible, in the book of Matthew, when Jesus gets to me, he says these words. He says, take, eat. Not just ordinary words, but words with power and with significance. See, when Jesus says, take and eat, that displays and shows the manifold wisdom of God. God who restores us by the same means by which we fail. We fail by eating of these forbidden fruit. Can I get a witness? Amen. And by and by and we recover by eating and taking of the blood of Jesus. God lets us know his word. We die by eating the tree of knowledge. Praise God. And we live by eating the tree of life. So take and eat. Get your cups in your hands. Holy Father, let us realize and recognize that this is no ordinary cup. This is the cup of hope, the cup of salvation, the cup of mercy, the cup of kindness, the cup of forgiveness, the cup of life. Holy Father, cause us to, at this moment, just to pause and say, Father, thank you for this opportunity to partake once again of the importance and significance of this here communion. 
but we take and we drink it and we do not spill it. We drink all of your goodness, all of your kindness, all of your mercy, all of your love. We drink Well, today, my beloved brothers and sisters, we're going to conclude this part three from grief to gladness, bereavement to betterment. Father God, now as I go into your word, as we venture into the rich treasure of your holy word, Father, God, I pray for so many families, people who have been devastated, who have been hurt, who felt and are feeling the pain, the suffering of losing a precious loved one, who are stumbling and, and stumbling through times where dark as a roller coaster ride, sometimes not knowing which way is up or which way is down. Sometimes their bed is a couch of tears. And they grope between the darkness like a blind man trying to find something to show their way. And I pray that amidst their pain and hurt, that these messages have been able to shed some of the light and the love of Jesus Christ upon their heart, their situation, that they will acknowledge their weaknesses acknowledge their pain, and find refuge in Jesus, the Christ, the Son of God. And I just pray, God, that it will be able to go from bereavement to betterment, Lord God, in a very unique and powerful way. So, God, I just pray that this closing message would resonate in someone's heart. help them and guide them, not only their lives, but lives of those around them. This I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 As you know, the uh, global pandemic has caused a lot of grief and suffering for those who lost loved ones in the pandemic, but also those who lost loved ones apart from the pandemic. Those who lost loved ones, they just died, had accidents. Those who lost loved ones just during this whole time, but still the pain is deep and it's great. And there's all kinds of losses that bring grief and sorrow. And, and uh, loss is painful. And it's, you grieve over so many different kinds of losses. Not only you lose a loved one, but when your health is failing, that can cause grief. When you lose a job, that could cause grief.
Some of you uh, have pets, animals. You lose a pet. That can cause grief. Amen? There's so many types of grief. But we, today we just said we're just narrowing basically on the area of losing a loved one. And I'm only touching on the, uh, the tip of the iceberg of the grief process and what it's like. It's individual and it's painful. So today as I close this three-part series from, from grief to gladness, from bereavement to betterment, I really pray that those who are watching on live stream or Facebook and those here in person, I really pray that God has used this message as a means and a method to help you and help people that they may know that God understands, God understands your grief and your pain and has a divine plan to take you from grief to gladness, bereavement to betterment. See, God loves us so very much and is so merciful and so kind to us that he does not want us to get stuck in chronic or prolonged, incomplete, or repressed grief. God has given us his wonderful word that says, your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my pathway. God wants to be a light to the dark of your grief and light your pathway. And he says, he sent his word and healed them and delivered them all of their destructions. Psalm 107, 20. God sent his word in the midst of your grief to heal you from your pain and your sorrow and deliver you from your destruction of depression, anxiety, stress, and all that stuff that will wear you down. He wants to deliver you. And today, with the help of the Holy Ghost, hallelujah, Holy Spirit, I'm going to be able to unload and unpack four accounts or narrative stories about grief that took place in the Old Testament. And I'm going to give them about the four names or titles or uh, ways of trying to describe this grief, amen. And these uh, titles are not conclusive or exhaustive. And then I'm going to wrap it up with some application actions that will bring about some transformation from grief to gladness and bereavement to betterment. Like I said earlier, most of us, we really, really don't want to talk about our mortality or death. It's not on our top of list of things to talk about. We don't want to deal with that. We want to just stick it aside. Amen. But we cannot be like an ostrich and stick our heads in the sand and say, it don't exist. We all, at some time or another, may experience that we have not. My mom always said, just keep on living. It'll come to you, amen. It'll come to you, amen. It is inevitable. For the moment we are born, we're on our road to death. Amen. We're on our road, amen. And some roads are shorter than other roads. We're all on the road, amen. Bless God, amen. So uh, I'm going to uh, kind of classify these three uh, uh, death, grief, into four points today. And uh, not all grief is painful and sorrowful. But I'm going to just break it down these little points. points right. Again, like I say, it's not exhaust or conclusive. So I'm going to classify these four griefs in the Bible these areas right. The first one, I'm going to call it gentle grief. The pastor, how could any grief be gentle? Well, gentle grief can occur in someone's life. Amen. I give you an example. This was how it was when Abraham... God. See, here's, here's what gentle grief entails. In Genesis 25, 7, 8, it said these words right here. These are the years of Abraham, life that he lived. 175 years. Abraham breathed his last 
and died in a ripe old age, an old man, and satisfied with life, he was gathered to his people. That's gentle grief. And that happened to someone, that's a gentle grief. Because you know that person lived a godly life, they served God, been faithful, they finished well, they did the will of God, they fought the good fight of faith, they may say, what else can they do? Yes, but that's a gentle grief, amen. See, like I say, that's that godly person. That's that your grandmother, your grandmother, your grandfather, that, that person who lived a good, godly, long life. And they were faithful. They served God, amen. And when they die, you say, God, you're the glory. That's a gentle grief. And see, really, we all, we all want to go out like that, amen. A long life, fully satisfied. We say, wow. That's how we all want to go out. That's a gentle grief, amen. That's like a contemporary, like when Billy Graham passed away. Lived a long life. Saw many souls get saved, amen. 99 years old. That's a gentle grief when he passed away. Uh, Mother Teresa, another person. Gentle grief because they lived a long, godly life. They did the will of God. They finished well. And people, that's how we want to go out. We want to finish well. A long life, like Abraham, fully satisfied. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's just gentle grief. But we all don't go out like that, amen. It says in Psalms 9 and 10, it says, As for the days of our life, they are certainty 70 years, or due to strength 80 years. So people, if we can go to 80, beyond it, praise God, that's a gentle grief, I believe. Praise God, amen. That's a gentle grief. This is painful, but praise God. We can we really can shout hallelujah those types of grief. Gentle grief. Y'all catch me. That makes sense to you? Amen, amen. And then the next one. I want to title this one uh, Global Grief. Global Grief. Here's a scripture from 2 Samuel 2, 11, 1 through 12. This is uh, after King Samuel, King Saul, sorry. Saul had, was killed by the Amalekites. And the story came to David that Saul and Jonathan had been killed in battle. This would happen in Samuel, 2 Samuel 11, 1, 11 through 12. Then David took hold of his clothes and tore them. And so, the, and so also did all the men who were with him. They mourned and wept, fasted until evening for Saul and his son Jonathan, and for the people of the Lord, because the house of Israel, because they had fallen by the sword. Global grief is when someone dies who was well known by people worldwide. King Saul was known throughout all the land of Israel, and so it had a rippling effect. Many people knew about that, amen. And, and so Saul was a king known throughout the kingdom. When people died who had a national, worldwide impact, died, that's, I call that global grieving. It still impacts the people up close and personal. Yes, it's painful, but it ripples across the world. For instance, Contemporary, Kobe Bryant was global grieving. Global grieving. Known worldwide. It's still the impact it felt locally by his wife and survivors. But that's called global grief because it impacted more than just the local family. It had a worldwide impact. That's global grieving. Michael Jackson, global grieving. God, what do you think about that? That's still a global Grieve because he had a worldwide impact. John Lennon, global grieving. Again, regardless of the impact where they were, but people do grieve over it, regardless of what you thought about him as a person, but still, he had a worldwide impact. Prince Diane brought global grief. Prince brought global grief. Dr. Martin Luther King. 
brought global grief. President John F. Kennedy brought global grief. It's painful, but it has far-reaching aspects when, when somebody dies. I'm not saying they're in, that, that your death is not any less important. I'm not saying that. I'm just, saying, I'm just categorizing it as a global impact. You may not have a global impact, but your death is still precious to those around you, amen. It's no less important. I'm just categorizing these right now. I said, no less painful to those who are close, the deceased, but the death has a rippling and effect nationwide or worldwide. That makes sense to you somewhat? Global grief, so we have gentle grief, global grief. The next one, the title is here, is what I see in a lot of funerals in people's lives. I kind of touched on it last week. I call this one here, guilty grief. Guilty grief. Guilty grief. What is this guilty grief? Here's the scripture. Uh, sec, it's uh, 2 Samuel 18, 33 through 19, 2. This is uh, after David's son Solomon was killed. The news came to him and said, The king was deeply moved and went up to his chamber over the gate and wept. And thus he says he walked, oh my son Absalom, my son Absalom, would I had died instead of you. Oh Absalom, my son, my son. Then it was told Joab, behold the king is weeping and mourns to, for, for Absalom. The victory that day was turned into mourning for all the people who heard of it, that that day the king is grieved for his son. You say, Pastor, why is that guilty grief? The Bible don't really, but I'm just kind of using it as a principle, as a backdrop of guilty grief. You, you have to know the story as to why I call that guilty grief. Here's what happened here. And a guilty grief is grief from unresolved conflict. Unresolved conflict. Someone precious dies, and you was not, and you and that person was not on the right standing, and you know that you should have been. Here's what happened here. King David had a blended family. Absalom and Tamar had the same mother, but Amnon had a different mother. This is found in 2 Samuel 13, 1 through 2. Amnon had a friend named Jonadab who schemed how Amnon could get with Tamar, his half-sister. And so the scheme came about to where, uh, where Amnon acted like he was sick. Had Tamar come to him and says, Tamar came to him and brought him some food to uh, eat. And then what happened to Amnon, Amnon, then he raped his sister Tamar and brought disgrace upon her. The Bible holds no punches. So Amnon, he raped his sister and brought disgrace on her. And then when Absalom, Tamar's brother, found out, he began to plot how to get even with Amnon for raping his sister. And so Absalom plan to go share some sheep. And he said, David, let your, let your brother go with me. And then he told the guy, he said, now, at a certain time, I want you to wipe out Amnon. And so Absalom had Amnon killed for raping his sister Tamar, and then he fled the area. So now David has his daughter disgraced by rape, one of his sons killed. And so Absalom and then another son, Absalom, flesh and I had no connection with, Abs with the Absalom. But eventually, David was convinced to bring Absalom back home. After being exiled for a while. Then Absalom comes back home, but him and his father David did not see or talk 
He's had us for two years. Didn't even talk. Same area, same neighborhood. Same apartment building, same house, just to kind of exaggerate, and didn't even talk or see each other's. And then it happened then, so then Absalom began to conspire how to take a coup and take over his father's kingdom. This is 2 Samuel 15, 1 through 12. And when David heard about that, then David fled the scene to avoid a conflict with his, with his son Absalom. What happened? A battle eventually happened between Absalom and King David's men. And Absalom was killed. When David heard about Absalom's death, is when he grieved. He had lost two sons. That's why I said that was could have been guilty, grieving. See the picture? See the picture, people? Some people you when a loved one passed away, all I remember was the last words you said. You were not nice. You was not kind. And that loved one passed away, and now you're grieving guilty. I could have said, I should have, should have did, I should have said, don't you see? And that's guilty grieving. That's guilty grieving. So I would so David had lost two sons. And I would say, David was grieving to the fact that it was unresolved conflict. That's why it's so important, people, to get things right with your family and friends. Do things right today, amen. You perhaps know someone who's watching on right now here in person. You know someone who has unresolved conflict, and you and that person is grieving, and also the guilt of having something unreconciled. You did not get things right. So basically saying, you know, uh, uh, take care of unresolved conflict. Take care of that. You never, never know when a loved one may not be seen again. And the, Bible, the Bible says uh, in uh, Proverbs 19.11, uh, a man's discretion makes him slow to anger. It is his glory to overlook a transgression. Proverbs 19. Sometimes people just overlook it. Overlook it, people. Sometimes it's just not worth the hassle. It's just not worth it, amen. It's not worth it. Get it right. Get it right, amen. The Bible says in Proverbs 21, 12, every man's way is right in his own eyes, but the Lord weighs a heart. You may say, well, I had a right to be angry. I had What's your heart? It's a heart condition, people. Get it right. Get it right. Man. Second Tim Paul says in 2 Timothy 1 3. I thank God whom I serve with a clear conscience, the way my forefathers did, as I constantly remember you in my prayers night and day. Like I said, I've seen enough of that. That's why I tell people when you have a loved one, Maybe it's that like you're taking care of and they're not taking care of they're dying. Do all you can, why you can, as long as you can. So that person sees so you look at the mirror and say, you know, I did all I could for that person right there. I have nothing to regret. Be that way, praise God. Get things right. I myself, I, I've had to deal with uh, some of that in, in, a, in a very small manner, not a very big manner, but I did it in a small way. Uh, Couple things. Uh, when my uh, brother Nuke had passed away, we talked on the phone all the time. But you know, it's like two weeks ago, about two, two or three times a week, talked back and forth. You know, sharing, talking about this and that. You know, and the night that he, they, the next day he passed, the night before he passed away, he called me on my cell phone, and the phone rang. And I didn't pick up the time to answer the call and said, well, I, I'll call him back later. It's like about 8 o'clock on Saturday night, so I'll call him back later. Guess what, people? I never got a chance to make that call back. My brother Nuke had passed the next day. I was here at church, got the word, Nuke had passed away. I was thinking, 
I kept thinking, gosh, what would, you, what, what would you call me? What do you want to say to me? Are you going to tell me something? I missed that call. I said, well, you know, I said, well, we thought that it's normal. I, always, I, I called him back, you know. And that time I didn't. I said, well, I said God, forgive me. I, 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 I knew I should have called him back. I said, I'll do it next. There was people you never know. Make that phone call. Do that text. You never know. A person's best day could be their last day. You never know, praise God. Another situation happened to me. Just a couple of years ago, another friend of mine passed away. There was four of us. We like we were buddies from our grade school, all the way through, all the way up basically. And uh, four of us, myself, uh, Fred Luke, he's still living, and Manfred Clemens and Al Thompson, he passed away. Manfred Clemens, friend of mine, and uh, he, he was sick. And uh, I went to the hospital to visit him. We talked a while, we cared a while. He had an illness, a blood illness. And we talked a while, and he said, uh, he was still calling me Harry, Harry Lee, you know, he said, uh, uh, come by and see me sometime, you know, and stop and say hello to me. I said, okay, I'll do that, man. I'll do that, man. I'll come by and see you. And then lo and behold, uh, two weeks later, I didn't go by and see him. He passed away. I said, gosh, am I that busy? I couldn't go by his house and say hello to him. He said, I should come by. And then a, then a few years, a couple of years later, uh, when my other friend Al Thompson became sick, I always go by the house more often, talk with him, just to see if he was almost trying to overcompensate, trying to uh, deal with that guilt that felt of not going by Manfred's house. It happens, people. It happens. Do all you can while you can. That makes sense to you? I help you some, amen? And then the final one. Again, I said, all grief is painful. All grief is personal. It's all hurtful. Yeah, it happens. And the last one, I would just simply title this one, Great Grief. Great Grief. See, people, it is plenty painful enough when you lose a precious loved one mother, father, sister, brother, grandfather, friend, that is painful. That's hurtful. Regardless of what they are in here. But when you lose multiple loved ones at the same time or in close succession, that can bring downright overwhelming and excruciating grief. That great grief. When a whole family it's wiped out at one time. When, when death, death occurred at the same time, time under the traumatic accidental circumstances, circumstances, the shock and surrounding events can lead to even greater grief. That's totally unimaginable. Unimaginable. It is grueling. It is difficult, exhausting, it's painful. It is difficult when families lose multiple ones. And we read about those situations where a car wreck wiped out a whole family. I heard about someone say, you know, uh, last week my mother died. Then two weeks ago my father died. Just bam, 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 bam. That is great grief, people. You hardly have a chance to get over one grief or another hits you. And the grief over, over multiple loss of your family? That is painful, unimaginable. And Job is a person in the Bible who went through that great grief. I'm not going to get into the theodicy about evil and suffering. I want you to use it as a backdrop. Job had Job 1, 2, and 3. 1, 2 says, seven sons and three daughters were born to Job. He had a large family, ten children. And then notice then what happened, if you read the book of Job, the Old Testament book called the Book of Wisdom, you're going to read chapter 1 and chapter 2, you find out the devil came, appeared to God and wanted to test Job and see how good and righteous Job was. 
And God said, Job, you, God told Satan, you can do anything, but do not touch his life. And then Satan began an all-out aerial assault upon Job. And so what happened was is uh, things began to happen. Happen fast and quickly. Let me just share that with you. says here, Job, chapter 1, verse 12. Now on, this is when God allows Satan to attack Job, it says, now on that day when his sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine in the oldest brother's house, a messenger came to Job and said, the oxen were plowing, the donkeys stood beside them, and the Sabines attacked and took them. They also slew the servants with the edge of the sword. I alone escaped to tell you. Verse 16. While he was still speaking, another also came and said, The five gods fell from heaven and burned up the sheep and the servants and consumed them. I alone have escaped to tell you. While he was still speaking, another came and said, The Chaldeans formed three bands and made a raid on the camels and took them and slew the servants with the edge of the sword. I alone have escaped to tell you. While he was still speaking, another also came and said, your sons and your daughters were eating and drinking wine in the oldest brother's house. And behold, a great wind came from across the wilderness and struck the four corners of the house. And it fell on the young people, and they died. And I alone have escaped to tell you. Not only did Job lose his kids, he lost servants also. Whether it was 10, 20, 30, he lost servants also. That is great grief. How do you deal with that kind of a loss all in one day? While one is, is still telling come another bad news, bad news, bad news, bad news. That is great grief, people. That is great grief. And somehow or another, Job was able to say, the Lord gives and the Lord takes. Blessed be the name of the Lord. It would take, I don't know, people, could you be able to say that if that came to you that way? You make say, you have to say that you, because it hasn't happened to you. And then it happened then, could you say it then? Hmm. Oh, it's easy to say it right, because you're not dealing with that right. Oh, yeah, I can say that. Yeah, I can say that. But let it happen. And then see what you can say. You can say that, blessed be the Lord. The Lord gives, the Lord takes away. And we worship God. I know of two families that unfortunately experienced the loss of multiple loved ones, the same incident. One family that I miss right now, Dorothy and Benita Smith, several years ago they lost nephew and niece, two little babies, and a father. Little children. Thank you for being so right now, so good. Lost two at one time, two little children. And then my aunt, several years ago, back in the 80s, she lost her daughter and three grandchildren at the same time in a hot fire. That's great grief, people. Any grief is hurtful. Anyone loss is painful. But when you lose multiple ones at the same time, how do you address, how do you deal with it, how do you process that? And I always remember my auntie saying, Harry Lee, I hope no one has to go through seeing multiple casts at one time. I hope no one, even my worst enemy, 
omnipotent to see multiple caskets at one time. And these deaths caused by fires, auto wrecks, natural disasters, plane crash, sicknesses, homicides, or other horrible ways. They said there are countless stories of people dealing with multiple deaths at one time in a short period. And we can't even begin to imagine what that journey is like. Well, people, let me conclude with some applications, action applications for this here. There's a lot, but I'm going to give you three of them right now to kind of wrap it up with applications for you today. I hope this blessed you, amen. I hope this kind of gave you insight, amen. Because like I say, uh, you may come across that, deal with that right there, be able to help people, let them know the pain is real. Number one, number one, we have to learn in the midst of our pain, losing a loved one, to accept God's grace. Accept God's grace. Accept that your loss offers you sometimes a brand new understanding. And be able to trust God with all of your feelings and thoughts, even the negative, even the ones that you don't want to think about. Trust God with it. If you are struggling with your faith, just cry out to God. Cry out to God. God is big enough. God is strong enough to handle your crying, your weeping. Accept God's leadership and, and let God just hold you and, and just take care of you, amen. Accept God's peace and God's comfort. Accept God's grace, amen. Isaiah 61, 1 through 3 says, The Spirit of the Lord, the Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is upon me. For the Lord has, a, has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to comfort the brokenhearted and to proclaim that captives be released from prison will be free. He has sent me to tell all those who mourn that the time of the Lord's favor has come. And with it, the day of the Lord's anger against enemies, to all who mourn in Israel, he will give a crown of beauty for ashes and joyous blessings instead of mourning, festive praise instead of despair in their righteousness. Then they will be like the great oaks of the Lord, planted for his own glory. God will strengthen you, bless you, comfort you, and use your life as a testimony to show what God can do once you trust and rely upon him. God will take that pain and fill your purpose. Secondly, in that guilt issue right there, Forgive, apologize, and just let it go. Let it go. You cannot go back and change the past, but you can have a different ending. Amen. You cannot go back and change the past, but you can control the ending. So, see, God forgives you, and He and He loves you. He knows we're frail human, and we make mistakes. We, we say and do things, things that are not right with God. God. We, we are, are prone, prone to sin. sin. We're prone to fall. Amen. amen. And there's two kinds of guilt. There's that false guilt and there's that real guilt. guilt. Amen. If you've done it wrong, just repent. Say, God, I should have did this. Just repent. Be honest with God. Say, God, I messed up. Just be honest for God. Amen. And, and then ask God to forgive you. God forgives you. He'll forgive you. We're imperfect. We make mistakes. Amen. Sometimes things just don't work out. So let, let the anger go. No, let the anger go, amen. It will destroy you and serve no purpose. And see, no relations, no relations are perfect. We all make mistakes. There are things we want to do and say to our loved one. We didn't do those things right there. Not overwhelm. Just ask God for forgiveness. Say, God, forgive me. And apologize in your heart and prayer. Say, God, I'm sorry. Just apologize, amen. Psalm 32, 1 through 3 says, Oh, what joy for those who disobedience are forgiven, whose sin is put out of sight. Yes, what joy for those whose record the Lord has cleared of guilt, whose lives are lived in complete honesty. Then it says in verse 3, When I refuse to confess my sin, my body wasted away, and I groan all day long. Get it behind you. Be right with God. 
Micah 7, 18 through 19 says, Who is a God like you, who pardons iniquity and passes over rebellious acts, remember, of the remnant of his possession? He does not retain anger forever because he delights in unchanging love. He will have compassion on us. He will tread our iniquity underfoot. Yes, you, you will cast all their sin into the depths of the sea. That's what God will do. Seek forgiveness, amen. And then finally, the last one, what I've been saying the last two weeks, is to promote our ministry to church here, grief share. Grief share. Number three is get help and connect. Don't try to go it alone. Don't try to be a long ranger. We're going to put, gonna put up a notice on the, on the board that you see the notice right, how to get in touch with right here, man. See, grieving is a normal process, but it's also very unique to each and every individual. Seek help if you feel stuck. Seek help. Get help. Get help, amen. We have a local group here at Greater Faith, Grace Bible Church, called Grief Share, and you can call the number right there, email, the, email us, and Erica Daniel will connect with you and get you involved in a Grief Share program. You do not have to go alone. This program is free. It's every Friday evening. All you have to do is purchase your book. It's online. And you cannot afford the book. We have ways to make sure you get a book also. So there's no excuse for you people. God wants to bless you, amen. And, and, and you'll be able to come to a group. You can discuss and vent your feelings with people who understand in a non-judgmental environment. So reach out to the church, reach out to us. And experience the compassion of people here at Greater Faith Grace Bible Church. And you connect with people who have a like experience. You can share your deep, dark pain. And allow the love of God to move those emotional scars and get you from grief to gladness. From grief to betterment. So don't, don't go through it alone. No matter what condition it is, seek help from the Lord. Proverbs 15, 22 says, plans fail for lack of counsel, but many advisors, they succeed. There's people there, Reverend Daniel, Mr. Dorothy, and Eric, who can advise you through not their own wisdom, but through the Word of God. The Word of God. It'll bring, bring you back, back to what God's, God's word says. The ultimate healer. The ultimate deliverer. That's, that's what it'll bring, bring you back to. Amen. amen. And then it says in uh, Romans 12, 15. Rejoice with those who, who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. People there to mourn right along with you. Because they know the pain you're going through. So people, never ever let your ego... Getting away with asking for help when you desperately need it. We all been helped at some point in our lives. Don't be silent. Here's a quote by um, Henry J. Nolan. He says, "The friend, the friend who can be who can be silent with us in a moment of, of despair, confusion, who can stay with us in our grief and bereavement, who can tolerate not knowing, not curing, not healing, and face through the reality of our powerlessness." That is a friend who cares for us. That's a friend, amen. And my final quote, and this final quote right here, I found this can really sum everything up when it comes to grief, suffering, and giving. This is a closing quote right here. This will bless a lot of you right here. It says, you will lose someone you can't live without and your heart will be badly broken. And the bad news is that you never completely get over the loss of your loved one. But this also good news. They live forever in your broken heart that doesn't seal back up. And, and you come through, it's like, listen carefully, it's like having a broken leg 
that never heal perfectly. It's like having a broken leg that never heals perfectly, that still hurts when the weather gets cold. Here's a kicker. But you learn to dance with a limp. Is that all right? It never heals. It never heals, but you learn to dance with a limp. You can post that, amen. Amen. That's good stuff, though, amen. Some of you right now, you, you're never going to get over it. It's painful. It's never here, but you dance with a limp. Hallelujah. So it's our hope and prayer that no matter what your circumstance is, grieving people, you can get through the storm, the grief, and come out. You can come out, praise the other side, stronger, more compassionate, more appreciative, that God has blessed you with, and trust in God's promises. Finally, Psalm 119 says these words right here. My life dissolves and weeps away in heaviness. Raise me up and strengthen me according to the promise of your word. And I, my own words here, will dance with the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you are a good God. There's so many people out here today. They're going through such grieving and difficult stages of life. Some are just recent, some have been years past, and they still have not been able to adapt and adjust to the life that God has blessed us to have in life. Some have been overwhelming towards them, God. But God, let them know, Father, that you will bring them from grief to gladness, from grief to gladness. We trust in you, Father. And they'll never completely heal, Lord God. Lord God, speak and let them know they'll be able to dance forever. Amen. Give God some praise. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. What I just said today, for those who are watching and here in person, you may be maybe scratching, what does all that mean? Well, it means nothing unless you have first had an intimate, personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Because as natural man, this seems like foolishness. And us who are born again, we know who God is and what God does in him. We know how to trust in the living Lord of the universe. We know who God is. So I, I, I ask you first of all, simply come to Jesus. Acknowledge him. Let him be the Lord of your life. Let him lead you and guide you. What, is it, what does that mean? It means simply that I'm going to repent of my sins. I'm going to believe in Jesus Christ. Because one day I tell you people, you'll learn that Jesus Christ is the resurrection and the life. If you believe in him, you will never die. You will always have eternal life in your life. Oh God. What does it mean to repent? Say, God, I'm lost. Forgive me of my transgressions, my failures, my flaws, my faults. I want to come to you and surrender my life to you. Simple as that, folks, and God forgive me. And the Bible tells me, John 17, 3, this is life eternal, that you know the only true living God and his son, Jesus Christ, whom he has sent. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. 